Welcome to the Farmer Supply Association Farm Report. I'm Randy Klopetska, agronomist with Farmer Supply Association. Well, we're taping uh, this program on January the 14th. Uh, we're finally getting a little bit of winter, you know, after a record-breaking December, probably the warmest December since they've been keeping records. Uh, you know, things have finally turned uh, more into winter, and, and we need that, I mean, for various reasons, and need to have a winter. And finally, we're getting it. Uh, as we're taping today, they've got a little snow in the forecast tomorrow. Who knows how much? I mean, it's went gone from four to eight inches down to one to two now. But uh, you know, certainly that's not going to hurt anything. So again, some winter would be good, and I'm glad we're getting it. And uh, and uh, it's just good to see. Uh, you know, some, we're going to be in the field here before too terribly long, starting that 2022 crop. Uh, there's some things that we'll need to be getting done starting in about a couple of months uh, or, or in a month, excuse me. As we get into mid-February, there are going to be some things we need to get done in the field uh, regardless of the weather situation. So I want to talk about those two things today and that's uh, burn down herbicides and also wheat fertilization. So again, really don't need to worry about anything uh, until about then as far as things going on in the field, but at that point, it'll be time to start thinking about some of these things. First, we're gonna talk about how burn down herbicide applications. You know, we talk every year about this time about why we do burn down herbicide ap applications. Uh, you know, a couple of things are related to, you know, the tillage we're gonna use for planting, obviously. Uh, sometimes we'll be in a no-till situation where the ground's ready to go already for next year, at, you know, at harvest, and we really don't have to do anything but plant right into that ground. So. Uh, you know, that's a situation where we want to keep the weeds down. Uh, another situation is the stale seed bed situation where we've worked the ground or we're going to work the ground and, and, and float it off and, you know, just going to plant into that when planting season gets here and we'll need uh, burn down herbicide applications, obviously, in that situation. And sometimes, you know, we, we haven't done anything and the weeds start getting pretty thick out there, the winter weeds, and we want to do something to just kind of knock those down and make tillage easier you know, when we do get to till and also make that ground dry a little bit quicker and warm up a little bit quicker. So those are the situations where we're going to need to apply some burn down herbicides. Uh, burn down herbicide applications are probably going to look a little bit different this year than they have in the past. You know, we've always based our burn down herbicide applications for the most part on Roundup. And uh, most people have heard about, you know, prices going up with Roundup, availability of Roundup. You know, and the bottom line is we don't know <laughs> final you know figures on any of that right now we did you know we certainly have seen some roundup prices back earlier in the fall but who knows what it's going to be like when the time to use them gets here bottom line there's still a lot of unknowns on all herbicides both uh, price and availability so you know we it's hard to really plan for sure what you're going to do until the time gets here because we don't know about a price and availability of some of these herbicides so that's going to be a big factor in what kind of burn down uh, programs we use but again, with Roundup normally being the base situation, you know, if Roundup prices stay higher, get higher, and if the availability is not there, certainly we're going to be looking at some maybe some different uh, choices uh, for our burn down programs. May change them up a little bit. So I want to talk about, you know, some of the herbicides we can use in round in uh, burn down situations if we're not going to be using Roundup. Of course, the number one uh, one we're going to normally look at is Gramoxone. It, you know, it's the nearest thing to replacement for Roundup. Uh, it's a good, good burn down material and has some weaknesses on certain things. Uh, something that makes uh, Gramoxone a lot better is if we can add a PS2 of, uh, herbicide in with the Gramoxone, it makes it get into those weeds better. It just makes Gramoxone, to me, almost a new herbicide, a much improved herbicide if you can put one of these PS2s in there. Uh, <clears throat> there are several situations where we can. Uh, with soybeans, uh, a good PS2 herbicide or the PS2 herbicide you'd want to mix with the Gramoxone would be Metribuzin, so that's a good choice there. If you're planting corn or grain sorghum, then the PS2 herbicide you would mix with the Gramoxone would be Atrazine. It'll help that Gramoxone quite a bit. For cotton, uh, the PS2 herbicide you'd mix in there would be uh, Diuron. So we've got some good choices for all of those crops. Uh, the, the bad thing is, you know, for rice, where a lot of our burn down situations are going to be, there's not a PS2 herbicide available for rice. So, you know, we're kind of left out in the cold and would, you know, have to go strictly with uh, a Gramoxone uh, application and wouldn't have anything, you know, really to heat it up very well, 
you know, in that situation. So again, that's probably your number one replacement for, for Roundup would be the Gramoxone and, and it's particularly the Gramoxone plus a PS2 if we can use that. You know, I've, in the past, I've always wanted to just go Roundup with these early applications and save the Gramoxone for when our pigweeds start coming up because it's absolutely the number one choice for our pigweeds uh, trying to control them. But, you know, it looks like we're probably going to have to use some Gramoxone in some earlier situations more so than we have in the past if you're wanting to make a uh, you know, burn down herbicide application early. So uh, that's, you know, that's probably our number one uh, go-to herbicide if we're not using Roundup. Other options, if you got ryegrass, which is you know becoming an increasing problem uh, in these situations, if you got ryegrass, probably the number one choice would be clethodum. Uh, select generic select or clethodum is uh, section three. Uh, so you know that's your choice right there. Uh, we want to try to get this out just as soon as it warms up, and that's really going to be the case. We'll talk about that later with all these herbicides, but you know we don't want to get too late with our clethodum applications for two reasons: if that ryegrass or other grasses get too big. It's not going to work very well, and also there is a plant back, and that plant back is very real. If you're going to like uh, you know rice, corn, or grain sorghum, if you're going to soybeans, there is no plant back. But for going to rice or uh, or corn or grain sorghum, there are 30 day plant backs. So that's another reason you got to make that application pretty quick. Again, after it warms up. Uh, another choice for the ryegrass would be gramoxone. Gramoxone is not as good as clethodum. Uh, on the ryegrass, uh, so you know, again, if you can use one of those PS2 inhibiting herbicides with it, that's fine. But for rice, where you can't, then uh, Gramoxone is not going to be as good of a choice. It's probably going to need multiple applications, but it is an option uh, for when we can't use the clethodum, getting those later situations, and we're getting into that plant back uh, interval right there. So, you know, that's some of the choices for ryegrass. Uh, one thing we're going to have to keep thinking about in the future is making a pre-application in the fall to prevent this ryegrass from coming up. You know, we've got some good options if we're going to be planting uh, beans or corn or milo, we can use some dual out there. But, uh, you know, where we're going to use rice, we can't use the dual. Um, they're looking at, uh, and they actually got a little label last year for using command in that situation. We still got to fine-tune fine some things with the label on using command, but that may be an option in the future is trying to keep that ryegrass down before planting rice. Uh, for broadleaf situations, if that's mostly what you got out there to burn down, then we can look at something like a 2,4-D, maybe a sharpen, and those uh, can be very good if that's all you've got is the, is the uh, broadleaves. Temperatures are very key. You know, I got my first burn down call the week after Christmas. I know Dr. Tommy Butts with the university said he got his first burn down call this year, the first week of January, but I beat that with that week after, week after Christmas. Really want to wait till it warms up. These weeds get actively going, growing again before we make those burn down applications. So, you know, let's wait till we get 50 to 55 degrees for maybe five or six days. And then we can feel better about making these burn down applications and them being effective. Another thing, if you want to, a uh, good opportunity to add a residual in there when you make the burn down to keep more weeds from coming up. So consider that. Something like a Valor, which has a 30 day plant back for everything except for soybeans. So, you know, that's an option as far as getting a residual out there. That's your burn downs. Uh, quickly on wheat fertilization. Uh, you know, we got a decent amount of wheat out there this year and uh, it got off to a good start with the mild uh, to warm, uh, you know, fall and early winter we've had. So, you know, it's, we're in good shape on our wheat so we don't have to be pushing anything as far as nitrogen fertilized. I always say if you know for that nitrogen fertilizing wheat, if you got some really late planted wheat that hasn't tillered well, you want to get that fertilizer out there that first shot in early February. But like it is right now, uh, where that uh, wheat has got some good size, it's tillered well, you know, we can wait till mid to maybe even late February to make that application and be fine. So that's where we're at. As far as split applications, you know, about three to four weeks after we make that first application, make that second shot. It's really, really need to split them, I think, in most cases, especially the very sandy soils and the very wet natured soils. I mean, and really just about any case, I would much rather see the application split. So again, the first one in February, the second one about the time the wheat goes to joining. Rates, and of course, everybody's wanting to talk about cutting stuff, but uh, you know, don't go too far with nitrogen. You know, the recommended rate is 120 units total in general for wheat uh, fertilization. So. Let's stay close to that. 
you know, if you've got a wheat that you know doesn't have good yield potential, you might can cut back to about 90 or so and be okay. But if we got wheat that's got good yield potential, I don't want to short that that uh, nitrogen rate. You know, you can save a little money, but you cut your yield as well. So uh, let's be careful on cutting rates uh, in this situation uh, as far as the nitrogen goes. I get a lot of questions about Agritain, whether we need that on our urea with these early uh, with these uh, applications in February and March. You know, it goes back to uh, temperature and moisture. If it's warm and it's wet, yeah, I would go ahead and put the Agritain on the urea. If it's dry and or cold, then maybe you probably get by with it. You know, it's not as big a deal certainly as it is with rice and corn, but certainly you can get some benefit if it's warm and wet. So keep that in mind on your nitrogen applications. Finally, ammonium sulfate, you know, and don't, let's not cut ammonium sulfate unless you've got some, maybe some medium to heavier soil that you've got some weed on. Yeah, you can probably not have to go with your ammonium sulfate there. But if you've got sandy ground, especially some of this stuff out in north of Newport, west of Tucker, and that real sandy stuff, don't cut your, not, your uh, sulfur rates. Um, you know, university recommends 20 units of sulfur in with your first nitrogen application. And I found on some of that sand, that's not enough. You really need uh, two applications of sulfur, splitting it apart. I generally go about 75 pounds of ammonium sulfate in both the nitrogen applications. That's gonna get me about 18 units of sulfur each time. Because when we have those wet springs, that sulfur leaches readily. And I've seen too many times where we try to get by with one shot on that first uh, uh, nitrogen applications and the sulfur runs out and that those new leaves on that wheat are yellow and you know you know you got sulfur issues and you've done lost some yield so let's not cut the sulfur let's stay with that sulfur on these sandy soils uh, for more information on any of this you can contact me through farmer supply association and this has been randy klepechka with your farmer supply association farm report